everybody, it's Valerie, Valerie Wallace Fine Arts, free drawing classes, one o'clock um, every day. And today is May Day, the first day of May, and um, it's kind of a gloomy day here, and I think that people are getting a little worn down. So join me and do a little drawing, it's going to be super fun and nice and easy, okay? And I know I'm running a couple of minutes late, so let's everybody should be there and ready to go. So let's let's just do it. Let's jump right in. Um, we're gonna do the background, and we're gonna put the the boat on there afterwards. So even the, because we don't want it to color around the boat and everything, I know it's um, hard sometimes to wait because that's the fun part. But um, just when we're doing the background, maybe don't go as heavy with your pastels or something. It's not going to matter that we color over it, but um, you could just be a little bit lighter in that area. Okay? All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line here at the horizon line from uh, to divide the sky from the ocean. Okay? So give yourself a piece of ocean. You know, you don't want a little tiny bit, but whatever seems right to you. Okay? Around here. Ooh, I don't think this is the color I want. Maybe this one. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, well, it's purple. All right, here's a red one. All right. The next thing we're going to keep in mind that this is just a draw, a uh, painting, and I wish I knew who did this painting, but I don't. I got it from it years ago. Um, and so, you know, it's okay to like do it in your own style, to choose your own colors. It's not real, you know. Not that that matters anyway, but you know, just let that lead you. The distance from the horizon line to the bottom of the clouds, which is pretty much a straight line, is just a little tiny bit. And the bottom of the clouds have a little wiggle to it. All right, so just go up a little bit and then just give yourself a little wiggly edge, however way you do that. Okay, everybody's is different, and that's some of the best parts of the picture is when people just do what's natural to them. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll fill this in. Uh, yeah, so I'm using a, the red, obviously, I guess I forgot to say that. And I will do down below, I'm going to do um, one with um, charcoal, you know, for those of you that are using a pencil or charcoal or whatever, because it definitely can be done. And, um, but I did choose um, a yellow piece of paper. So if you happen to have a colored piece of paper, that can help, um, you know, make your pencil drawing a little more interesting than just pencil on a white piece of paper, right? Right. All right. Um, if you have, I did do a little one on the, and put it on my story to show you, oh, it looks like this. So, you know, if you want, can you see it? Oh, yeah. If you want, uh, you know, to do pencil, there's no reason why you can't do that and do it on a piece of paper or do it on a white piece of paper. It doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with my charcoal. I'm going to go maybe a third of the way up. Give yourself some... I guess by now you've already done it, but all right. We're trying to get this horizontal. So after you do this red stripe or, or black stripe, hold your paper up in front of you and see if it's going one way or the other. Because if it's a little low on one side, then just add a little more to the bottom of the other side. Okay? Is mine like that? I think you might be a little high on. High here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like this, okay. So I'm a little. I have a little extra over. I'm a little um, lower here. So I'll just bring this across and just add a little bit onto the bottom. It maybe you have to add a little on one side. I mean, you can't. You don't think about taking things away. Just think about adding to this one side. Is that better? <laughs> what about this one? This is uh, B2, right? This is low here. Yeah. Um, in this picture, you, if you're doing it in black and white, or in pencil or whatever, then you have to think about what it would look like if you took a black and white photograph of it. Um, that's how you're going to be able to see one thing from another. And so, in reality, or in this picture, the purple, if I squint my eyes, I can see that the purple is actually lighter than, um, or darker than the red. So I put that on there, I'm going to lighten that a little bit. Um, I have a, a 
kneaded eraser. Very dirty, but um, that's what you can use if you have charcoal. That's a great tool. And look at how it kind of softens that up and erases pretty nicely, too. I got colors all over here. All right. The next thing we're going to do is I want you to um, do kind of a sun shape. And because you're going to have your sailboat here, you want to get it over to the left a little bit. This one's kind of in the middle, but I would, I, I would suggest you do it over here. And um, I'm probably not going to put my clouds like this. My clouds are probably going to be more like this whole little piece is going to cover. So I'm just going to have a little portion of the sun that shows above the top. So if you don't get it just perfectly rounded or whatever, don't, don't worry about it, okay? Um, and if, if you want it really big, do it big or, or do it small. But go up a little bit from where this red line is and give yourself some kind of an arch. Like about maybe that big, okay? And that'll work. Same thing down here. Like I said, a little over to the left, I think will we'll help you out. All right. Mm -hmm. Good? So far so good? I'm sticking with my red, and what I'm going to do is see how the clouds, they start up a little high here, and they work their way down to the sun, and then they go over, and then they go up a little bit more. So, you know, you can do this any way you want to, but if you want a nice big, you know, this is a nice piece to contrast the sky, that dark purple. So if you want it to be big, then go ahead and do it. Um, I think I will start up here, and I will make a wiggly line. And I will go down around the bottom of my sun and I will work my way over here with another wiggly line. Okay, now this is going to wind up being purple, so don't color that in yet. Um, we're going to go ahead and, yes, do this, this part of the sky. So the idea is that the sun is kind of in a V shape, you know, making a lighter bit in the, in the sky. Okay, so obviously um, you can use white, but a light, if you have a, an assortment of yellows and oranges, like this, like this, and I've got my red, I can use all of these on there. So that's a fun thing to do, just be able to use all the different colors. Okay, um, hang on, let me draw this on here first. So I start up here, down low, and then Um, the one thing you kind of want to do is work the red that you've made your outline of your sun into the sky a little bit so that it's not outlined in red because that's a little trick of drawing is learning how to put one shape up against another shape instead of just drawing outlines for everything. It's a little bit of making your, it's, a, it's sort of unlearning something you learned when you drew when you were a kid, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the red. This is a great red. I love it. So I'm gonna do that. And so I'm sort of thinking of it being in this V shape. So maybe here, I'll add a little extra on the right side. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that down below here. Um, where is it? I did get a nice little May basket from my neighbor, I think. Which neighbor was it? Oh, it's from Mars's. Mm. We used to do that when the kids were little put candy in them and give them out. It's a very, uh, um, it's, it's a tradition that has definitely faded away. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but when I was a little kid, it was something that everybody did. But I used to do it with my kid, the students at the Montessori school we would make May baskets if it was, if the day I was there was anywhere close to May Day. And <laughs> what you're supposed to do is a little basket. I get a little flower from my neighbors, but you can put candy in it or whatever. And then you go and you put it 
on somebody's doorstep, and then you ring the doorbell and you run away, and they try to come out, grab you, and kiss you. Oh, we didn't do it like that. That's what they told me when I was a little kid, so I was like absolutely horrified. <laughs> It's kind of creepy. It's totally creepy. When you think about it, it's totally creepy. Yeah. So, I was a little bit concerned about that. I did not want a stranger to, you know, or my neighbor to grab me and kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> but it never happened. But I. Yeah. None of your neighbors, you didn't have any neighbors who wanted to grab you and kiss you. Oh, probably those Kenny boys that lived over in the cabin. <laughs> when they were 20. Because Eddie Kenny looked like Elvis. I kind of was confused. I kind of thought maybe he was. It was just because I was only about four. So I was like, oh, Kenny's in Germany. What? Hi from Joe in Germany. You haven't changed in 35 years. Joe Bouchard? Yeah, Joe Bouchard. Bouchard. Hey, Joey! <laughs> How crazy is that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> well, that, that kind of threw me for a loop. All right. Um, uh, uh, all right, so take, a, <laughs> take a, an orange. What you're going to do is... It, Joey, I hope you're drawing along with me. <laughs> That's crazy. We grew up together. We were in... I know you were in my first grade class because I, I can still remember your little picture in my um, with Mrs. Wehrman. She was one of those mean teachers. <laughs> Hopefully she's not watching. She's <laughs> I doubt she's watching. I mean, I, I, I sympathize. I, I, the thing I remember hearing, so I'm just putting this color like right up next to it and then over the edge a little bit so that it's kind of a soft blend from one to another. I'm using these, uh, these uh, chalky pastels. I mean, I heard that she was like a fifth or sixth grade teacher, and they didn't need one, and so they gave her the option to, do, to be in uh, first grade. And if you're kind of used to sixth grade, <laughs> first grade could be rough. You know, not everybody's meant for that. No. So we'll say that she just was in the wrong. But Joey was in that class with me. Yeah. Yeah, he, his, his sister, um, Sandy, was in your dad's class. And then his other sister, oh no, yeah, and Pam was in Rich's class. All right in a row. Wow. So say you color this on here, and then you're going to look at it later, and you're like, oh, I wish I'd put a little bit more on. You can always layer it on there. And the other thing is you get this stuff called workable fixative, and, you know, like a spray can. And um, you can spray it on, and it will give it a little bit of a texture that you can color more on. So people who do a lot of um, oil um, pastels, chalk pastels, they all they use that as a tool regularly. You can also do it with your, um, with your charcoal. All right, so I need a little on that, which is a little bit different. So I'm trying to, you know, I want to get a little lighter with my charcoal. Okay, and then if I use this eraser, that, oh, no, I, I did it again. I broke another one. They're just like, they just, you know, you could probably look, give them a dirty look and they'll just like fall apart. <laughs> Me. Like, you know, you know, they just don't want, there's so little binder and then they just like want to fall apart. All right. Good? Yes. Okay. All right. So the next thing we want to do before I forget is to do the sun, okay, and 
if you um you could do it this is this one is really almost white so when we paint we do it really 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 um, white because if you look at don't look at the sun don't look at the sun but if you did you would see that it is incredibly incredibly light kind of like our bonfire we were trying to decide like the, the mm. color of fire is really sort of an unnatural thing but it is very very light okay so I'm going to take the light yellow that I have here, clean that up a little bit, and I'm going to put this on my sun. I grew up in a small, uh, this town here, really, and uh, you, uh, you went to school with kids in your first grade that you very likely went to school with all the way through, which is not the way things are everywhere, but, uh, you know, it's good, it's, it, you know, that's not the best way to do it, but it has a certain, I don't know, it affects you in a certain way, I guess. All right, so the other thing I want to do is, this has a little, um, highlight runs right along the, the clouds okay it's not important if you don't put it on there or if you're not going to do that with your black and white one but if you can it's part of um, it's such a beautiful thing to see happen when that sun drops behind the clouds and you see it just kissed by the that really really bright light so if you can do it what you do is take take your white or take your um, this yellow and I'm going to bring it right along Hopefully you didn't make your um, clouds too wiggly because you'll have to follow along in a way. Or, okay, so I'll put that right on there like that. And I, if I make it a little bit, on, I don't have to make it super skinny because um, when I do the purple on top, I can just go over it a little bit if I need to, if it's too, if it's too big. So don't worry about it being like yeah, pencil thin. Okay. The darker your sky is, like where the red is, that I just dropped on the floor, um, the more that's going to help make that yellow show up too. Okay. All right. And then the other place that we have it is right here. And when I do this as a painting, a lot of times I have the people paint the water yellow with a really, really light yellow. And we paint that whole lower section, and then we go and we do the sky and everything so that it dries. And that's how, I don't know if you can see it, but it has this these, these flecks of light that you know are the highlights from the sun. They just kind of show through the blue, depending on how much blue you put on. But it works pretty nicely. Okay, moving right along. Let's do the, let's do the purple clouds. So pick something dark. You can do dark, dark maroon, dark blue, dark purple. Um, what else? I mean, you can do it green. If you want to do it green, it's your picture. You do whatever you want. Um, this has um, a little bit of blue that's on there that I will use a little purple in my water and a little bit of um, blue in my sky because it helps to kind of tie things together. Because you know, this, this isn't reality, but. So when I go along this yellow line, I want to, I want to make it kind of as small as I can do it. So I'll go right along the edge of it like that. I do love the beach. I love a wide open space. I have to walk in the woods a lot, which I mean I appreciate the fact that I'm lucky enough to be able to walk around the woods and walk my dog and not see anybody and just not have to worry about my dog getting all worked up about somebody else's dog. Mm. 
but you know the woods around here are beautiful. It's beautiful to to um, go and as the seasons change, how everything's always changing or the weather changes. I do really like that, but I do something about a wide open space. I really like. I'm a little nervous about what goes on in the woods. Not animals, but crazy people. <laughs> Years ago, there was a guy we, that I met used to hang out with us in Portland, and he was from, well, this is what he said anyway, he was from Kansas, and he came to Maine, he had always wanted to work on a boat, and he found that being out on the ocean was a lot like being out on the plane. It's a totally different experience, but that wide open space of the plains and then the wide open space of the water were very much the same. Now my, now my uh, water is flipping. Alright, isn't that? So is this. Does it show in my picture? Not as much as it does in person. No. Um, so here, oh, yeah, I guess I better do it here, don't I? I this will give you all time to catch up. I need my paint to dry. Ooh, pretty. So here, I almost forgot, but if I go just leave a little teensy weensy bit of light behind, it'll have the same effect. Alright. I want to learn how to um, paint clouds well. Mm -hmm. Because I just think that would be a great thing to do. Daphne and I were summer we did a little bit, we tried a few paintings of Katahdin, Mount Katahdin, which is our big mountain here in Maine, and uh, there's a lot, we did big pictures, and you, you think it's going to be easy, but it's really very, very hard to get clouds to look as beautiful as they are in reality. Yeah. Some of it is just confidence. Like the more you do it, the more you feel confident about what you're doing, and that shows in the picture. You, when you look, when you feel tentative about it, it shows. So don't, you know, don't be tentative. Jump right in. I also, so I'm gonna put a little. Um, I need cleaner pants. Where's my phone? There it is. Okay. I'm gonna put a little blue in here in these. In this purple. Okay, right in the middle of it. All right. And that, some, you know, there's not much sense of um, shape to any of this stuff, so it doesn't really matter, but I like being able to use more than one color if I'm really with it. There you go. So if you like, um, you know, I think... Uh, I think a lot of people having just something to take their mind off of things for a little while is very helpful. That's really why I'm doing these classes. You don't have to show anybody your picture. You don't have to do anything. You can put it in the recycling bin when you're done. But for a little while, you're thinking about something else. And I think that's pretty healthy and important. Um, and you know what? If you do it, if you do it, I bet three times. It'll be easier, and you'll get better already in three times, I bet. I guarantee it. So it's worth it, okay? All right. Let's do a little bit on the water, and then we're going to put the boat on, and then we're going to um, do a, do the... Before I put the dark part on the water, I'm just going to put the blue on there first, but the light blue. I'll put this on there afterwards, okay? So don't do that right away, necessarily, unless you want to. But you can't wait. You just can't possibly wait. Okay, so... Again, I'm, I'm going to take this light blue and I'm going to reduce this yellow line out here 
just too low, just a sliver. like that and then I'm just going to do a little lighter. Especially if you have a little colored paper, why not let it show through? Okay. That's not good. My hands are dirty. Okay. I'm not even going to do that. Here, same idea, only I'm going to leave a little teeny bit of yellow behind. Yeah, so the playlist is on um, YouTube at free drawing classes. If I put in free drawing classes, you can see it comes up after the first five of them. But that might, may or may not happen when you do it. Um, free drawing classes with Valerie Wallace Fine Arts. And then there is a playlist. And you can get all 40 something of them. But. And then um, they're also on my Facebook page. And if you do want to share your picture, you can post it to me or you can put it on right in the comment section below the video today. It'll, I'll put, it'll, it'll go right to my page right after this and then you can put them right on there if you want to. I love that. Makes me really happy, doesn't it now? It does. It makes me weep happy tears. Yes. Okay, are we ready to do the boat now? That's it. Right? Did I forget anything? You know what I forgot yesterday on the or whenever we did the lobster? I forgot the tentacles. You did. Yes. Uh. And then the one that I the fish that I talked about the white water the whole time we did it and then I forgot to put it on. I need to pay better attention. Yeah. I need to not yeah. go ahead because uh, then I put them on. Yeah, don't go ahead. Okay. Alright. We're gonna put the boat on here. I, I, and, and I just want you to follow, if you can, follow along pretty simply. I'm going to use the black, and this is the important thing, okay? I'm ready. There's a couple of important things, but one of the most important things is that the, the mast is really long, okay? It's very, very tall. You don't want your boat to be here and have your mast be in your purple cloud because you're not going to see it. There's so little contrast between the black and the purple, you won't see it. So you have to get it up above your, you have to, so that the eye connects where you don't, where the contrast is um, low. Your, your brain puts that together, okay? The other thing that you kind of want to do, which is just barely like this on this picture, is that the bottom of your sail, you want that to sit in the water part. You don't really want it to line right up with the shoreline, the horizon line. Oh, this is one other little thing you might want to do. You can take a, oh, like a purple or something, and see how there's a little bit of land here? So you can go along here, very, very small, and you can have a little... just yet though. We're going to do the boat part first. So if you look at the boat, it's pretty much a little rectangle, a skinny rectangle with a little pe the little cabin thing on there. Okay? Uh, you don't want it sitting on the bottom of your page, but um, feel free to bring it into the water. So you're going to draw a line about this long. Okay? Now, this in this one, I think the proportions in this are pretty good. And the sail might be a little bit on the big side, but that is, the mast is more than two times the size of the boat. So when we do it, if you make a really big, big mat, a big um, 
mast, and then you look at your boat, and you're like, my God, the mast would catch some window and flip the whole boat over because it's so big. You just add on to your boat, okay? That's the easy thing to do. You can always add on to the boat. You can always add on to the sails or whatever if you have to, but, okay? Um, so I'm going to do that, and what I'll do is the boat's going in this direction, so I'm going to make a slanted line here like this, and this one's going to go more straight up and down. Okay, uh, maybe a book, maybe it tips a little bit. I, um, this is, I was going to say, this is kind of like Virgin Anita's boat. I think it's kind of this kind of boat. So I think it has sails, but it also has a motor, right? I've never been on Virgin Anita's boat. I do not know what it this is. This is like. my brother-in-law and his wife, and they, they live in Chicago, and they have a boat on. All right, is this look slanted? If it's a little tippy, all that's going to mean is that the water's rough, all right? And it's rocking out there in the waves. All right, the next thing you're going to do is put a little cabin on there. It's just small. So you just put two little lines that go up like this, okay? And keep it on the small side, and then you just go across, and you just fill this guy in, okay? Just as easy as that. So I'm going to do that again here. I'm going to make the line. I might have to erase down here. I'm just going to hang her. So I don't lose it all together. Yeah. Like I said, a little tilt on the bow. Maybe a little less on the back. Connect that to your long skinny rectangle. I'm hungry. I'm getting almost done. Okay. Then you're going to have the little cabin. Two little lines that go up. Put this across the top. Okay. So I made my boats the same on both pictures, but this is a much smaller piece of paper. So what happens is. Um, I'm still going to make the boat the same way, but what will happen is that the, that the one that's, in the, that's, that's smaller for the size of the paper just seems closer to us. If you make a little tiny boat, it seems farther away. The only problem is if you make a tiny, tiny boat, then you're going to run up against not having room, you know, your sail won't set apart. Okay, so this is a little closer to the front, and I'm going to put a line that starts way up in the sky like that, okay? If and then if I measure this, there's one, there's two, and there's a little bit more, so that that's going to be good for me. Okay? Down here, I'll do the same thing. I'll try to make it straight up and down. If it's not straight up and down, um, you might be able to correct, correct it a little bit when you do the big sail. So, so check it. Hold it up in front of you and see if it looks okay. If it's got a little lean, it, lean to it, that happens. Mm. Right? Okay. Yeah. If your background shows through when you color it a little bit, that's okay because um, a sail is a little bit of a um, trans translucent. I mean, it's not see-through. It's not plastic, but it isn't thick, thick, thick necessarily that you wouldn't sense. You could sense this kind of like really dramatic sky behind it. So that's okay. All right. Oh, so I want to measure this. My boat here. One, two. So I'm going to have to bring that up. Okay. Oh, this is the thing. This is important, and a lot of times, a lot of times people forget, kids miss it. But see how the boat's here and the sail's here, and there's a little sliver of water. You want that. You don't want it way up, though. You don't want your sails way up here. They're just above the boat. But you want a line that comes with a little space, because that helps to um, just create contrast. Bring that sail out like that. And then you're trying to get from here down to there, okay? And then we'll color that in. And like I said, you can kind of check it and see if it looks like it's pretty vertical. A little glow of the red underneath, uh, behind, blended in here. That's perfectly, perfectly acceptable. it when it's all black 
that shape in your picture, Deb. The silhouette. That's right, silhouette. When I was a kid, it was like a popular thing at like the church fair or something to have these artists come and they would cut out a silhouette uh, profile portrait of you. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. And it was amazing. They would take a little perfect little black piece of paper and use like toenail scissors. Yeah. Like really little teeny tiny. I bet they were, you know, because this is 50 years ago. And um, sometimes they would have, I think they even had a little curve on them so you could, they could just get around like the shape of a nose. And it was just a little tiny piece of paper. And like it looked a lot like you. Yeah. Only I remember going and having it done and my hair was down. And so of course it didn't really look that much like me. And then one of my friends had, I think it was Jenny Jacobs and she had a ponytail in and she got the ponytail in her profile and a little tiny curl of eyelash. And I was like, hers look really good. And she's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna go continue. Oops, let me use this one. So this one's smaller. It starts down here. What we want is the space that's between the two sails. That's the probably the last important thing you have to think about. Okay. So you can can oops send this out. So oops, so why isn't it working? Okay. And I think I'll go. You know, from a little lower point, I'm gonna go out to the front of that. And then I want to start right here, and I want to just, you can kind of bring it down, and then just, you just want to have that space in there. Okay? Color this in. There we go. They were super cool, though. I still remember it. I always remember being fascinated by this woman making these like, profile things. Sounds pretty cool. Was probably I don't know, maybe first grade or something like that. So I remember it was at the um, Keith Anderson mm -hmm. Community Center, and I remember that. Oh, what was the song? Oh, songs like. Um, That was really popular, and then the birds season. It's this turn, turn, turn. I think there were like a bunch of like older girls that did like a modern dance routine to it, like at the church fair. And stuff. Interesting. Maybe it was the autumn fair. It was very, very, um, you know, still a holdover from those colonial days to have like, you know, little little fairs all the time. I guess. Okay, the last thing to do. I'm going to take my purple and my blue because, again, I wanted to put a little purple in down here and a little blue down here. And the thing you want to do is not have the ripples of the water of this darker bit in front. If you start it right where the bow meets the water and you trail it backwards, it's going to seem like it's shoot, you know, it's leaving this wake and it's shooting into like uncharted water. Okay? It's not the end of the oh. world if you do it, but it's a, it's a little hint. And the other thing is... Um, in a sense, too, we would have a reflection, so you could have a little extra in the water down this way. Okay? Let's see how that works. Um, all right, so I'm going to bring the purple right here, and then I'm just going to kind of wiggle that out a little bit in the line, and then I'm going to add a little bit extra here. You know, I might even be thinking of the sails. You do little pieces of the water it'll seem a little you know wavy and choppy and stuff but you do want to get pretty dark right up next to the boat I think the blue will work pretty well because it's dark but not too dark okay mm -hmm. I love the
this one. Love the colors. I love, love, love it. I hope you love it too. Tomorrow we're doing, I, I forgot to get it out, but we're doing um, a portrait of like a woman from the 20s from this woman, Mo Welch. Um, she's got the little cloche hat on. Super cool. It's fun. It's profile. Try that out. Okay. And um, be nice to yourself and have a, have a good day. Right? Right. Be nice to somebody else if you can. But if you can't, you know, some days you can, some days you can't. That's true. You know. Yeah. We do what we can. We do what we can. Sometimes you get hangry. You're not set in stone. You can always modify who you are a little bit. All right. Hey, Joey. I don't know if you're still watching, but that just threw me for a You'll have to read some more comments. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We'll keep at it for a little bit longer. I'll show you the picture up close so you can... You can finalize yours with a little more detail. Hey, Bettina. Don't sink the boat. <laughs> yes, we're trying to sink the boat. Hi, Sandy. Oh, season's in the sun. Yeah, yeah, good. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Duvall. It is. It's like a, it's a reunion from my, my class. Hey, Sue. Hey, Max. Hey, Alicia. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Oh, I'm going to have to read it. Oh, oh, my old gym teacher, my kickboxing teacher is watching or was watching. My mom and Kara and Colin. All right. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow.